Hello everybody, this is Mr. Rob and welcome to another prediction video as yesterday we had one for Clash at the Castle, today we have one for All Out All Elite Wrestling's pay-per-view, that is tonight. If you're excited for this, make sure you drop a like and you subscribe down below, especially if you want more wrestling content. You guys actually really showed out for the Clash at the Castle predictions, and I really appreciate that. So we're back here with another one because this is a huge weekend if you are a wrestling fan. We had Clash of the Castle yesterday, All Out today, and then there's also Worlds Collide as well for the NXT part of WWE. I will not be doing a predictions for that pay-per-view. Instead, we'll just do one for All Out, which is AEW's Big pay-per-view, that's tonight. AEW usually only runs four pay-per-views a year, and All Out is usually considered their second biggest, but I like to consider it their biggest pay-per-view of the year. Usually, you know, Double or Nothing is traditionally their biggest pay-per-view, kind of like their WrestleMania, but for some reason, I just feel like All Out, they usually put a little bit more towards, and it's the successor to All In just a few years ago, and especially after last year's All Out, I just think that it is more of their traditional biggest pay-per-view, but... This year has been a little different. The build has been a little shaky for this show. Whether you think, whatever you think of it, it's still going to be an action patch match. There's actually, or a card. There's actually 11, last time I checked, 11 matches on the main show, which is an insane amount. So it's going to be a long night of action. I will not be watching it live. I might try to watch it later, but I did want to give my prediction for you guys. So let's jump into it, considering we have 11 matches to get through. Starting off on the main show, the first match is Brian Danielson versus Chris Jericho. This is an interesting match. They just wanted to get both these guys, I think, on the pay-per-view and actually had a very late build to it. And it's going to be a good one, though. Danielson and Jericho, two of the bigger stars in AEW. My prediction is Chris Jericho. I do think Jericho will win this one. Brian Danielson has lost a couple of matches to Daniel Garcia in recent times. And has helped put over Daniel Garcia, but... For some reason, AEW has been really protective of Chris Jericho as of late. He won the feud against Eddie Kingston for whatever reason. And I think they'll protect him here. I think Daniel Garcia will get involved. They've been teasing a split between him and Jericho. But for some reason, I think it's all been a ruse. I think Garcia will help Jericho beat Danielson. And it'll continue that feud. Even though I do think uh, the Jericho Appreciation Society and Blackpool Combat Club need to go their separate ways. I don't think we'll see the end tonight. But I think Jericho will get the win. Next up, there's the four-way for the interim AEW Women's World Championship. Tony Storm versus Dr. Britt Baker versus Jamie Hayter versus Hikaru Shida. I hate interim championships in wrestling. It works in the UFC just because they don't fight all the time. I think in professional wrestling, if a champion just gets injured, you just got to vacate the title. Like, that's just how it is. You know, you just vacate it due to injury. When you come back, it'll be a big deal. I just don't like interim championships in wrestling, but AEW is very... Keen on continuing to do that. So we have this match here tonight, and I do think Tony Storm will win. It was rumored that she was going to beat Thunder Rosa at this pay-per-view in the first place. So you might as well just have her win and then have her go on, have the unification match against Thunder Rosa. She'll probably win that. But I think Tony Storm will win. Would not be surprised if Britt Baker wins just because Tony is very high on Britt Baker. She always gets airtime, regardless of what you think of her ability to cut a promo and her wrestling ability. Tony Storm, though, I think it's a safe pick, and that's who I'm going to go with. Next up, six-man tag. The House of Black versus Darby Allin, Sting, and Miro. This one's intriguing just because there is Miro, and I've always been a big fan of Miro, and Sting's obviously involved, but this just seems like a way to get everybody on the card, and I do think Darby Allin, Sting, and Miro are going to win. Sting doesn't take losses. Miro is the good guy. Darby Allin, they're very high on as well, and just the House of Black just has just kind of been floundering as of late to be honest i was trying to think of a better word but they just kind of been floundering they started off hot malachi black had a phenomenal debut at AEW, and then ever since then they just kind of floundered he lost a feud against cody and then they had whatever was going on against the death triangle that was just kind of subpar and then now they're here this six-man tag will probably lose again and yeah we'll just that adds on to the fuel of the fire that malachi black has asked for his release because you know sometimes the grass isn't always greener on the other side so I do think House of Black will lose Darby Allin, Sting, and Mira walk away victorious. Next up, Jade Cargill versus Athena for the AEW TBS Championship. This will be an interesting one just because they've been building to this one for quite some time. They've made Athena really seem like she could knock off Jade Cargill. And I do think she can, but I am going to go with Jade. I think Jade still going to stay undefeated. I think she still has some legs to her championship reign as well as her undefeated story. I Plus, I don't 
want to see her lose to an ex WWE superstar. I think that'll really send a wrong message in the fact that, you know, all these ex WWE guys can't just come in and win. I think building the homegrown talent is still very important. And Jade is very homegrown. I she, she has one of the biggest star powers on the roster. I mean, you know, she's on the poster, she's on the new AEW game that's coming out in a couple of months. So I think Jade is still a very marketable star, and I think she holds on to the AEW TBS Championship. I want her to. Would not be surprised if Athena wins, but I'm going to go with Jade Cargill. Next up, Jungle Boy versus Christian Cage. This one, bad blood. I think Christian Cage is going to win. I think this feud still has some legs. This is the first encounter between them. Eventually, Jungle Boy will shut up Christian Cage, but I don't think it'll happen here tonight. I think Christian Cage wins. He continues to run his mouth. That way, when Jungle Boy does beat Christian Cage down the line, it'll be that much more of a bigger deal. I do think maybe Luchasaurus, I thought they kind of rushed him coming back with Jungle Boy. So therefore... I think that he will actually turn on Jungle Boy. I thought the Christian Cage Lucasaurus pairing was actually very unique. And I thought they just kind of rushed it by saying, hey, he's actually on Jungle Boy's side. So I think there's a little bit more to it. Maybe he gets involved. Maybe he helps Christian Cage win. But I do think Christian Cage will pick up the victory. Then we have six man tag team again Wardlow and FTR, the former Pinnacle Mates. Versus Jay Lethal and the Motor City Machine Guns. This one is definitely Wardlow and FTR's match to lose. This is just a way to get them on the card. I've always been a big Jay Lethal fan ever since his days when he was Ring of Honor World Champion. But this is going to go the way of Wardlow and FTR. They are the champs and they will win this match. There's not much else to that. Then we have the Casino Ladder Match. Where the winner receives a future AEW World Championship match. Claudio Castagnoli, Wheeler Yuta, Pinta El Zero, Miedo. Ray Phoenix, Roosh, Andre El Idolo, Dante Martin, and to be determined. Honestly, when you look at this field, there's really no one there that I could see challenging for the world championship. I think Moxley versus Claudio would probably be the most intriguing, but Claudio is the ROH champion. I don't think they want to have him lose against the AEW world champion. And nobody else really stands out. Nobody's really a world championship contender, in my opinion. And I do not think, despite the rumors, I don't think MJF will appear in this match. I don't think he is the Joker. I think it'll be somebody else. So therefore, I'm not going to predict MJF. Out of the rest of the field, I want to say Andrade El Idolo. I think he is probably the biggest star of the bunch. But I think they haven't really utilized him to the best of his ability. And I think he's he tweeted out something the other day. I think it was yesterday where he was, you know, said out of time or something. So I think he's a little disgruntled backstage so I'm going to go with the wild card. I'm going to say Ray Phoenix wins this match. I think he will win the ladder match, and I think he'll have a match against Moxley down the road. It'll be a phenomenal world championship match, but it'll just be temporary because the winner of this match, they're not going to wait till full gear to have the title match. They'll definitely have it on AEW, which is another reason why I don't think MJF will come back in this match because they're not going to rush that title match. That'll definitely be a match worthy of the next pay-per-view. So I'm actually going to go with Ray Phoenix. A little bit of a wild card here. I don't really see anybody that's really worthy of a world championship match, but I'm going to go with Ray Phoenix. Then we have the AEW World Tag Team Championships, which are on the line, which is Swerve and Our Glory versus the Acclaimed. I think this one was kind of hot shot, in my opinion. The Acclaimed haven't really done much. They've been feuding with the Gun Club, which is a, a lower level tag team. And I do like the idea of the Acclaimed being a babyface tag team, but this is way too soon for them to get a world tag team championship opportunity. I get kind of wanting to strike with the Iron is hot, but there are a lot of better tag teams that are ready for this spot other than the acclaim. So Swerve and a Glory will win. I think the Gun Club will get involved in some capacity, but Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland will stay tag team champions. Then there's Ricky Starks versus Powerhouse Hobbs, a grudge match. The former Team Taz members, and I think this one's just going to go the way of Ricky Starks. This will be a very intriguing match, but I think Ricky Starks will win. He just turned babyface. I think Ricky Starks has a phenomenal look. He's great on the microphone, and I think that he has more upside of Powerhouse Hobbs. I do like Powerhouse Hobbs a lot, and I think his time will come. But AEW does also not really favor their big men as much as their smaller guys. So I do think Ricky Starks will win this match and continue his babyface turn and potentially go on to bigger things. Then the tournament final for the AEW World's Trios Championships, the Elite, Kenny Omega, and Young Bucks. Versus Hangman Adam Page and the Dark Order Alex Reynolds and John Silver. This will be my match of the night. I don't think there's any question. This match is going to be phenomenal. It's going to have the storytelling. It's got the elite in it. It's got Adam Page. You know, Kenny Omega is so great. It's so good seeing him back, honestly. 
and him and the Young Bucks, I think, will win this match. I like the pairing of the Dark Order and Adam Page, but I think, you know, usually your first champion is always a bang, like a banger, a big time name, and there's no bigger trio than the Elite. So I think Omega and the Young Bucks will win this. They'll continue, you know, their little story, you know, they'll have a nice run. And I think the Elite is the best trios team, so you put the titles on them. It's going to be a phenomenal match. Maybe we see Adam Page, you know, hug it out at the end. Maybe, you know, they just shake hands and he continues his alliance with the Dark Order. Who knows? But I think the Elite won this match. It is my match of the night as well. And that brings us to the main event. John Moxley versus CM Punk for the AEW World Championship. The main event of the evening should be for the Undisputed AEW World Championship. But for whatever reason, AEW had that match two weeks ago in the squash match. Which is really, in my opinion, suffered or really, you know, stagnated the build to this match. I don't know why they didn't just save it for this show. Instead, they went with that just that squash match. And you know, I don't know. I just I really have not liked the build to this match. And I really think it's put them in a pickle because, you know, CM Punk, it's in Chicago. He's going to have the crowd behind him. Usually, he doesn't lose in Chicago. And John Moxley just squashed him for the undisputed title. So can you really sell the fact that CM Punk can just come back and now beat John Moxley? And at the same time, if CM Punk does win, you know, just kind of think, what's the point? What's the point of even having John Moxley win the first match if you're just going to put the title on Punk? So, I don't know. I think they really booked this one into a corner. I haven't really been a fan of the way they booked it. But we're here nonetheless. And I, who do I think is going to win? I think they are going to put the title back on CM Punk. I don't know if that's, once again, I don't know if that's the best idea. But I just don't see him losing in Chicago and CM Punk will win this match. They'll sell the story of oh he got he found his side he found his you know edge again. He beat John Moxley, and I think that's the way they're gonna go. The wild card though is MJF. Is he going to make an appearance? If he is gonna make an appearance, I think it makes more sense to you know stare down with CM Punk after winning the championship. So maybe that's going into my prediction a little bit. I honestly could see Moxley winning again, but I don't know if they'll have Punk lose two times in a row. I don't know if Punk would ever agree to lose two times in a row as well. So I am going to go with CM Punk. Not sure if MJF will make an appearance, but Punk will be a two-time champion, and the title will have just gone hot potato for no reason. Well, that's my predictions for All Out. It's a long show. I didn't go with even the four matches on the pre-show. So I hope you guys are excited for the show. Let me know in the comments section what you think down below. Also, let me know what you think of the build and your predictions. But thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you leave a like and you subscribe down below, especially if you want more of these prediction and wrestling videos. This is Mr. Rob, and I'll see you in the next one.